Hello everyone. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, in this video, I'm going to give you an in-depth review of the Gigster silent bass drum monitoring system made by a company called Porter & Davies located in the UK. Porter & Davies and this silent bass drum monitoring system have been around for quite a while. The list of famous drummers and not so famous drummers that use the product is a mile long. And for those of you that don't know what this is exactly, this is a description that comes straight from their website. The Gigster is a silent bass drum monitoring system which allows you to feel, hear, and experience your bass drum like you've never felt it or heard it before. It consists of the finest tactile generator available, built into our own patented throne top, and uses bone conduction to deliver powerful, precise, and nuanced reproduction without sound. So in this review, I'm going to go over what you get with the Gigster as far as what the components are, how to set it up, We'll go over the controls. I'll tell you what they do and how they work. And then I'll tell you about two really unexpected and pretty cool applications that the Gigster provides you that nobody else really talks about. And I think they're pretty significant, so I wanted to let you know about those as well. So without any further ado, let's get to it. So this is the Gigster module. This is the throne top that comes with it. And it also has a cord that connects the two together. With the throne, it also comes with a throne base that you can buy. But if you have your own throne base um, and you want to keep it, the Porter & Davies seat accommodates most modern seats. With my situation in particular, I had an old Rock & Sock hydraulic throne that I really liked. And I didn't want to buy a brand new one and I didn't want something else. So I asked Gil at Porter & Davies what to do. And he told me no problem at all. You just have to buy an adapter plate on the bottom of this particular seat for the Rock and Sock Throne. It's an updated version, four bolts. And um, he told me exactly where to get it. And it was only like 30 bucks online. And it was really easy to put on. And that took care of it. So the, the seat is also customizable to a point. You can do different colors. Um, I like purple. So I got a purple one with the with Porter and Davies uh, English Racing Green logo. And then, of course, the Porter and Davies logo is on the seat. The seat weighs about 13 pounds, and uh, the transducer is mounted inside here. So to get to the controls of the module, uh, it's really simple. It's pretty simplified and streamlined. Um, there's versions of, of their tactile monitoring systems that are larger. The original one, the BC, stands for Bum Chum. Pretty funny name. Um, and BC2, you can rack mount them. They're a little bit more elaborate as far as bells and whistles, but this is kind of streamlined, so it's a little bit more affordable. But it's really simple. It's got a volume knob, and it's really not volume as far as sound goes. It just gives you more signal. Then there's an input trim, which helps you to cut back the signal so you're not peeking out the channel. There's a little channel um, indicator right here. And then the low contour just helps to adjust how much of the boominess you kind of want in your bass drum. If you like a, a boomier, more ambient sound, then you can turn the low contour up a little bit, but that's what that does. But that's all the controls there are. Um, on the back is just the power button right there. And on the front, you'll see this is the out. So what you do to set it up is you just run the power cord, which is a twist lock. And you just plug it in there. And then you run the other end of the cord to the bottom of the seat. There's an adap there's a, the adapters right there. And that's it. And then you just put the seat on top of your throne and you're ready to go as far as setting it up. Now, in order to use this, if you have an acoustic kit, then you need a bass drum microphone. Something I forgot to mention about um, miking the bass drum is if you have an electronic drum kit, you don't need a microphone. You just plug the bass drum cord into the module and there you go. You're off and running. You don't need a bass drum microphone at all. And the bass drum microphone, you want to have a quality bass drum microphone to reproduce the sound pressure levels as best you can. So with my in my particular situation, I'm using an Audix D6. Uh, for my bass drum mic and you just all you have to do then is just plug your microphone into the back of the gigster into the mic line in there's a mic line in button it's kind of upside down for you to see but it says mic line in right there 
that's where the microphone goes, just like that. So at this point, you can use the Gigster. Just put the microphone in your bass drum, and when you play it, you'll get the effects of the Gigster. If you're playing a live gig, you can still use the Gigster. You just give the sound man another chord, and instead of plugging the the cord into the microphone right to the snake for the PA system, you just plug it into the line out here, the mic out, and just take that to the snake. And then the sound man gets the signal just like normally, and then you get the benefits of the Gigster. So I have the Gigster back in my studio now, and you see the red microphone cord. Uh, that mic cord is going to my focus right um, for recording purposes. So that's how you would do that. Otherwise, if I was playing live, that cord would go right to the snake. For the PA. So two bonus things that happen with having the Gigster that I want to talk about that nobody else talks about, not even the developers of the Gigster itself, um, that I think are really cool are, number one, this having the Gigster kind of helps you determine how tight you want your front bass drum head. Whenever I first got this kit, this kid has a 24 by 14 inch bass drum, and I always played a 22 by 18 inch bass drum for the bulk of my career. And the 24 by 14 was a little different animal. So I was experimenting with it to try to figure out what the tuning was, and I got a good tension on the batter head, and I tuned the front head up a little bit higher normally, and I tossed the microphone in there and played it, and I got a gigantic, powerful sound from the Gigster, which was great. But... I tried to experiment a little bit and thinking, well, maybe if I lower the front head a little bit, maybe that'll give me some more low end and still have the power and all that. And when I did that, when I lowered the front end, the front head, what happened was that the powerful signal from the Gigster wasn't quite as powerful. It was a little bit less, which tells me that a higher tension front head creates more sound pressure level inside of the bass drum. That's really what the bass drum microphone is doing is it's picking up sound pressure levels and sending it back to the Gigster module. It's not really taking the sound. So the higher sound pressure level is, acoustically that's going to give you more volume in your kit, in your bass drum. And then secondly, it's going to give, through the PA, it's going to translate into more punch. So it helps you to determine that, yeah, your front head, turn that, tune that front head up a little bit and you're going to get a little bit more punch and a little bit more power out of your bass drum. So it helped in that aspect. And then secondly, it helps with the microphone placement. As you see where it is right now, that's the best place that that microphone position worked to pick up that sound pressure level inside there. I moved it in closer at first, and I had it about halfway inside of the bass drum, pointed right at the beater head, and it was good. It sounded good. When I moved the microphone back to that position where it's half in and half out, I had much more power and a much more powerful signal coming through the Gigster and in through the seat than I did when it was closer. So it helped with the microphone position as well, which I think is important. So how do I like the Gigster? Well, let me tell you, I absolutely love it. It makes my playing experience 10 times better than it is without it. I can't play without it now. Even with practicing, I can't play without it. It's, it's that, that much of a difference. It's like to describe it, and I'm sure you've, you've already heard about this or maybe read it in other places, but to describe it, you know, as a drummer, when you have those subwoofers behind you and you're doing a kick drum check, you know, in the beginning of a gig and those subwoofers are throwing that bass drum sound out at you and you just, it feels so powerful and it, it shakes your whole body and you just feel like you can knock the walls down with your bass drum. That's how it feels with the Gigster. Your whole body just is filled with your bass drum sound and it's not a sound. I mean, it's not coming in your ears, but it feels and, and seems like it is. But your whole, with the bone conduction, it really does work. I mean, it, your whole body and head is just filled with this bass drum sound and it's, it's so powerful and it just makes it so much more fun to play. Something else that's pretty cool too is not only the bass drum, but some of the toms and the snare drum get picked up by the microphone that's in the bass drum, and that comes through the Gigster as well. So you get a little bit of enhancement of the toms and the snare drum along with the big, powerful bass drum. So it's really cool. It really makes everything sound cool. Um, so if you have a little bit of extra money or you're maybe scrimping and saving to buy a boutique snare drum to add to your arsenal, or 
maybe you want to buy some other accessories or something, I would seriously consider buying a Gigster because it will last you forever. And it, like I said, it just makes the playing experience 10 times more fun. So that's about it. I hope you uh, got something out of it. If you have any questions about the Gigster or anything like that, check out their website and you can always hit me up in the comments. All right, man. I'll see you next time. Take care.